This is pre-calculus concept 8G, uh, sequences of transformations. So you got, guys have learned a whole bunch of transformations the last couple lessons. This is about kind of pulling them all together. Uh, before we get started, I want to point out that on page 213 of your book is a really good summary of the last couple lessons. So all the different transformations, uh, stretches, shifts, reflections are summarized really well on page 213. All right, so box one is about the order in which you do things. So when you see several transformations all at once, um, our goal is to be able to graph the final product, but we really need to do it in steps or stages. And you always want to think about them in this order. So if there are any horizontal shifts, you want to do that transformation first. Any stretches or shrinks, second. Any reflections, third. And any vertical shifts, last. All right, box two is an example. Our whole goal in this problem is to graph the function over here. Uh, g of x equals 1 half the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. Kind of complicated, but really we want you to realize that it's just a version of our common function uh, absolute value of x. So if I know that one, and I know my transformations, I should be able to do this. All right, step one here is to think about any horizontal transformations first. So that x minus 1 inside the absolute value bars means I'm going to take my original graph and shift everything over one unit to the right. So the point 0, 0 becomes 1, 0, and the point 3, 3 becomes 4, 3. Okay, our next step is going to be to apply any stretches or shrinks. Uh, in this case, we have a 1 half out in front of the absolute value, and that's this right here. And that's going to be a vertical shrink. All the y values of the function are going to be uh, multiplied by 1 half. Um, notice that 1, 0, when you multiply the y value by 1 half, stays as 1, 0. But 4, 3, when you multiply the y value by 1 half, becomes 4, 3 halves. If you look at the entire graph, it ends up being kind of squashed down, and it's a flatter looking graph. Okay, our final stage of this graph is to apply the uh, vertical shift of plus 3. Remember that that means every single y value is going to be increased by 3. Uh, the point 1, 0 becomes 1, 3. And the point 4, comma, 3 halves, when I add, take 3 halves and I add 3 to that, I'm going to get 9 halves. All right, the graph over here on the right is my final answer to this. You can see how important the tracking the points through is going to uh, help us know that you know what's going on. So oftentimes you're going to be given a point or two and asked to kind of show the transformations as you go. And our final graph is shown there at the right. Okay, box 3 is another example. Again, I'm going to graph a kind of a complicated looking function, but realize that it's really just several transformations of x cubed which is one of our basic functions we should be familiar with, right? Okay, so I've got a picture of x cubed to start. Um, noticing that I have no horizontal transformations this time, uh, the first thing I'm going to apply are my stretches. Okay, in this case I have a vertical stretch of a factor of 2. Um, everything is going to be stretched out vertically. A little bit hard to show on the graph, that's again why the points are really important. Um, 0, 0, when you stretch it out, is going to stay at 0, 0. But uh, negative 2, negative 8, if you multiply all the y values by 2, you're going to get negative 2, comma, 16. Okay, next transformation is any reflection. Since I have a negative sign out in front of my function, uh, I'm going to reflect this graph through the x-axis. Uh, basically, the entire graph gets flipped upside down. Remember that the x-axis is your mirror. Um, negative 2, negative 16 becomes negative 2, positive 16. Since 0, 0 is on the mirror, um, when you reflect that, it's going to not change that point. Okay, my final transformation is the vertical shift. The plus 5 in the equation is going to shift everything from the last graph up 5 units. Um, you are going to take the point zero, 0, I made a mistake there, and it's going to become zero, 05. And you're going to take the point negative 2, 16, 
that's going to become negative 221. Every other point gets shifted up 52, and your final graph here shows uh, our final equation y equals negative 2x cubed plus 5, and this. All right, our final transformation is the vertical shift. The plus 5 in the equation is going to move the entire graph up 5 units. Uh, negative 216 is going to become a new point. Negative 221. 0, 0 is going to be shifted up 5 units. That's 0, 5. And we've got our final function and its graph. All right, let's try you try. We're going to start with a x squared function, common function, but our goal is to graph something that looks quite a bit more complicated. Um, I would like you to think about one at a time the transformations you would use and what final graph would look like. Be sure to show the two points as they are transformed. All right, so here's the series of graphs you should have gotten. The first one which should have been a shift to the left three units. Um, then I wanted to stretch everything out by a factor of 2. And then finally, uh, shift down 1. The graph here on the lower right should have been your final answer. And the transform points should have ended up being negative 3, negative 1, and negative 1, 7. Uh, these are challenging. You've got a lot of small steps to keep track of. We'll be practicing these a little bit in class.